Grimes County. Today is Wednesday, April 10th, 2018. It is 9 a.m. and we are located in the Grimes County Annex Building, 114 West Buffington Avenue, Anderson, Texas. At this time, we will call to order and have the invocation by Pastor uh, Thompson, uh, Charles Tompkins. I'm sorry. Let us stand, please. Let us pray. Most gracious Father, we come now asking your blessings upon this court. We realize, Father, you are the one that's over the greatest court. And Father, ask your wisdom to be passed down upon this court, upon all the commissioners, judge, and everyone that is here. And Father, we pray, Father, that we will resolve every problem or solution that there is because we honor you and to know that you are with your people. Thank you for this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Let us have the Pledge of Allegiance to the United States flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The Texas flag. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, Our county judge is out this morning attending our leadership conference. Let's keep him in our prayers. Uh, at this time, we're up to public comments. We look forward to hearing from the citizens of Grimes counties and others. If you have any public thoughts you'd like to share at this time, we ask that you come to the podium, introduce yourself, and uh, please limit your comments to about two minutes. Thank you. Do we have any public comments? I have one announcement. Go ahead. I'm Grimes County Tax Assessor Collector Mary Ann Waters. Just to let you guys know that starting Monday the 15th, we'll be doing boat and motor registrations and titles in our office. Great. That's good. <laughs> I'm Gail Sell, and uh, we had our town cleanup uh, Saturday, March 30th, and uh, Al Peeler uh, gave us, or provided us with some community service workers, seven or eight, and we got a lot of trees clean, clean, cleared off and roadways cleared out, and we thank y'all very much for allowing that to happen. Thank you, Al. Um, I do have an announcement. Commissioner? Saturday the 13th the Crimes County area go Texan committee is having our annual crawfish boil uh, you can get your tickets at the door we've, we've sold all the tables that we have the tickets are $50 at the door so all you can eat crawfish sausage and corn potatoes mm -hmm. what time is that? six o'clock six? Yeah. six o'clock we'll be there at 5 30 but okay. should start serving at six all right, uh, so we'll move on right now to consent agenda items three and four. And that's all we have, three and four. Are there any questions? <clears throat> There's no discussion. I'll make a motion to approve consent agenda items three and four. Second. All right. We have a motion on the floor to approve consent agenda items three and four by Commissioner Cox, accepted by Commissioner Mallet. All of those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. We're now up to uh, item number five, Sexual Assault Resource Center Education and Outreach Specialist, Consuelo Martinez. Is she here today? If not, it's item number five, and I'll present then. This is a proclamation to take action. The item is considered and take action to approve the proclamation designating the month of April as Sexual Assault Awareness Month in Grimes County and authorize the county judge's signature. 
proclamation. Whereas the effects of sexual assault go far beyond the physical and victims often develop a number of psychological conditions such as post-traumatic stress disorder and depression affecting families, friends, and Texas community, spurring fear, anger, and a sense of vulnerability. And whereas few survivors of sexual violence seek help immediately after victimization due to shame or fear of not being believed, to end sexual assault, we must alleviate these fears and begin by believing. And whereas the members of a caring society Members of communities across the state of Texas must unite to remove the stigma of rape, and the Brazos Valley community must continue the dia dialogue started by the Sexual Assault Resource Center in their places of work, schools, and homes. Whereas each year, the month of April provides an opportunity for the Sexual Assault Resource Center and rape crisis centers across the state of Texas to renew their commitments to serve their communities. Educational efforts also intensify, which ensure that Texans are aware of the sexual assault services available in their area. Now, therefore, we as the Commissioner's Court of Grimes County do hereby designate April 2019 as Sexual Assault Awareness and Provision Prevention Month in Grimes County. Um, we appreciate the Sexual Assault uh, Resource Center and all of their efforts and uh, all of our county partners that work with them. So at this time, do I have a motion to approve the proclamation? I move that we approve the proclamation designating the month of April as Sexual Assault Awareness Month in Grimes County and authorize the county judge to sit in the court. I, I believe second. we're all there to sign it. So I think it has a place for all of us yes, to sign it. Yes, it does. Okay, yeah. And I second it. Thank you, Commissioner Mallon. All of those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, thank you. Okay, we're up to item number six consider and take action to approve the Child Welfare Board's request to remove Michelle Sanders from the board and approve adding Patty Sexton as her replacement. And we have this morning um, members of the board, Mayor Gail Sal and Ms. Susan Boudreau. Thank you, Mr. Scott. I first want to start off by saying thank you all for all of the, that you've provided for us because we would not be in existence without you all. Um, we have a handout. And I don't know if all of y'all uh, looked at it. But it basically, the first page of it is something that I put together. The second page, um, Mayor Sal is going to talk about. Um, looking at April as um, Child uh, National Child Abuse Prevention Month. And I would just like to say that in Grimes County, um, we're a small county, we're a poor county, and we, we have an increasing number of children who have been abused. Um, I first became aware of child abuse in, in Grimes County years ago. I was in education here for 42 years, and <coughs> one of the first cases that I had um, was a child who was about three years old. Mm. She had uh, uh, was a beautiful child, absolutely beautiful. She'd been born completely normal. She, at this time, at three years of age, was blind. She was deaf. She couldn't walk, and she would never walk, and she couldn't talk. She had been abused by her father. That was my first indication of some of the horrors of child abuse. That's a horrible story. Then there's another story of a child that, in a different school uh, within Grimes County, that came to school one day with a cockroach in his ear. Uh, the parents were contacted, uh, did nothing about it. The nurse uh, contacted CPS. CPS came in and took the child. Um, the child's the cockroach was removed from the child's ear, and the child's <laughs> hearing was not lost forever. But in the meantime, the teacher that had reported the child fell in love with the child, took the child home, and now is the adopted mother of that particular mm -hmm. child. So you see there's the horror, the horror sides and the good sides, but what we do with the Child Welfare Board is to try to bring awareness of abuse in, this, in, in our county and across the nation. There are, there are many different kinds of abuse, and it's all laid out in the, in the handout if you want to read about it. 
But what we want to, want to do is make you all aware that we are here to provide services for the children whenever possible and that we do appreciate the support because all of our support comes from you all. Um, so there are 47 cases right now of children who are in care in Grimes County and that's a lot. We used to have a few and now we have a it continuing to grow. Um, Mary Sal is going to talk to you a little bit about what we, how we spend the money that you allot us. Um, okay, and like I said, right here we do have a handout if you would like to pick one up and just to read all about what we have here in Grimes County. Um, I have actually been on the, I came on the board in the late 1990s, but I've been the treasurer since 2001. <clears throat> and when I came on board, there were like six to ten, it varied uh, yearly, but six to ten uh, Grimes County kids in, in, in uh, care. Well, um, as the time went, and so basically back then we provided only clothing uh, several times a year to the foster parents for, for them because they didn't get really any other money from anybody else. Well, uh, when, um, and we would give like, uh, May is foster parent month and we would give money just for the parents to go out and have a night out, you know, or something like that. But, uh, but we would only provide clothing at that time. Well, as the years went by, in 2003, we were up to 14 kids that were Grimes County kids in care. And most of our kids are placed out of the county because we don't have that many foster parents in the county at all. And so, uh, but now we have some kids placed inside our county because a relative is taken has taken control of them or something like that but um, but most of our kids are from in surrounding counties um, in 2005 we were up to 17 kids in 2006 we were up to 30 kids uh, so you can see as the years go how child abuse is just growing and growing and growing and um, in 2008 we were up to 43 kids and so at that time we were getting to where, okay, our money is really getting depleted here because we, we get money from commissioner's court every year as, as an allotment from the, the board. Um, so then we started only giving emergency clothing, like when they would go out and pick up kids in the middle of the night, well, um, we would, um, you know, provide clothing for that family that just got this kid with just what it had on, you know. And um, so that kind of made me sad because we were running low on money. Well, as the time went, Commissioner's Court has been more generous to give us a little more each month, uh, every year to, to provide for that. And um, so at Christmas, so now presently we give a clothing allotment in May for summer clothing, which we're fixing to do that. Uh, and then in August we give a uh, school clothing allotment. And then at Christmas, we give uh, Visa cards, uh, and and on and those two allotments in May and August is used basically only for clothing for those kids. Uh, at Christmas, you can take that money and buy Christmas gifts for that kid or whatever, you know. But um, and so right now, where we get our money from, like this last allotment we got from the county was twelve thousand. And then we do get the jury donations, and the last uh, uh, jury donation we got came to $2,590. So that gave us, you know, basically uh, 14, almost 15,000 to work with for a year. And um, over the, so over the years, uh, used to, like I said, it used to be just clothing, but as we got more and more kids, we got more and more situations, and so people started, so the work case workers started asking us, hey, uh, you know, can you do this, can you do that? And so within a limit we do, you know, help as much as we can. Um, uh, so where we spend our money mainly is clothing for, for the children. Uh, we give them Christmas cards with uh, Visa cards in it to spend. We do uh, ads in, at, like this month, um, this child abuse prevention. So we've done some, uh, we did, Matt did a story for Susan in the paper uh, last week, I think it was. And anyway, different things we do and then, but we send the C, our CPS workers to, in January, to a, uh, a conference each year. 
Uh, we um, we pay for car seats, play pens, bunk beds and mattresses, baby monitors, diapers. Um, we did have, um, what was the name of that? The Rainbow Room or something? Mm -hmm. Rainbow Room. Uh, that they can get some of that stuff from, but not what they need. Um, we've paid for emergency prescriptions, doctor's visits, daycare at one point, for a, and then we did spend $800 on a special needs helmet that a kid had to have for his uh, a certain illness that he had. At one time, we uh, spent we bought 10 of those lifelike baby dolls at $338 each and gave them to the school district to use in their family life. Uh, classes. We've uh, paid for social security cards, birth certificates, medical records, fingerprinting, uh, driver's education for those that got old enough to drive but didn't have the, the money to pay for driver's education. Uh, and you know, stuff like that, we feel it's necessary to, because if this kid doesn't have a driver's license, then he can't go get a job and better himself. So we feel like that's important, and uh, we've has we paid for sexual abuse exams, graduation rings and pictures, caps and gowns, prom tickets. We did a roach treatment on a home. Um, we did electric heaters, electricians, and the lumber intend to repair a roof where kids were staying. Uh, we've given donations to Scotty's house, recent and shattered dreams, and recently we gave Brenda. Uh, William some money. Uh, we donated some money to her to help with the crime victims um, assistance program there. Uh, we did. A, we recently got a GPS tracker for a, a child that has autism, and the parent was having a really hard time, so we paid for a tracker uh, for that one month uh, and to help her out. And then recently, we paid for two months of car insurance for a young man that had a job but he didn't have a way to get there so he had a car or someone gave him a car and but he didn't have car insurance so we got him two months of car insurance and hopefully after that he would have enough money then to you know pay for his car insurance so we do a lot and our CPS workers out of Brian and Brenham tell us that our case workers tell us that our board is really one of the best out of their region, you know, that's what we do for our, our kids in care. And so, uh, on the, presently serving on the board now is our leader, Susan Trudeau, me, and a familiar face over here, Bob Goldstein. And Bob came on board after I, a few couple of years ago when I gave a report here, he signed up. So thank you, Bob. And Mary Nichols is on our board, and Sharon Allen, Lester Underwood, Ruby Carr, Talita Coleman, and Sherry Fout. And uh, our our commissioner's court representative is David Dobianski. He's very loyal. Yeah, he comes to. He's very good to come. And so, uh, because of personal matters and different matters, Michelle Sanders is leaving the board, and then we we would like the board to. Add Patty Sexton, which is here, and uh, she's gonna would like to come on board. And, uh, Patty has someone special in this. You wanna tell her who you are? Tell them who you are. Oh, um, well, <laughs> um, uh, my son is here, John Christopher. Good to you. Keep going. <laughs> And he's wonderful. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's what he's here. Um, actually, I'm a Grimes County native. I, I was born here, grew up here. Uh, in 1985, moved to Conroe um, and was there for 30 years. Just moved back uh, about a year, well, August, it'll be a year ago. While I was in Montgomery County, I worked for CASA, and um, which is, if you don't know, it's it's actually, they we, we I still say we, uh, they take cases of children in foster care and actually their guardian ad litem while they go through the court system. So along with Susan, I've seen some really horrendous things. Um, I've seen some miracles. Uh, I've seen some happy endings. Um, but evidently, I I'm just flabbergasted by everything the Child Welfare do Board does here because they don't do that in, in Montgomery County. Um, so it, I'm just... <laughs> 
thrilled to be a part of this, and uh, and thank you for the opportunity. Well, so as you can see, she's going to be an asset to our board. Yes. Appreciate her if you vote her in for us. Thank, thank you. you all. I would like to add to that. When I came on as liaison to the board, <clears throat> we were having trouble getting uh, a quorum at our meetings. And uh, we canceled several meetings because we didn't have enough people there. And I applaud uh, Susan and Gail and the people who are on the board now because we are up to, what, 14, 15 members now. Uh, and the board has really come <coughs> forward and, and uh, people have really come forward to help us on, on the board. We appreciate it. Would you like to make that move? Yes. I move that we approve Child Welfare Board's request to remove Michelle Sanders from the board and approve Patty Sexton as her replacement. Second. All right. We have a motion to approve removing Michelle Sanders from the Child Welfare Board and approving Miss Patty Sexton as her replacement. All of those in favor say aye. Uh, Any opposed? All right, thank you. Uh, are you Miss Martinez? Excuse me. Are you with the sexual? I'm Miss Carol, the executive director, the new executive director, and she should be here any minute. I was actually just asking her. Okay. So, well, we did approve the proclamation. Oh, wonderful. And uh, um, I read it out loud, and we really thank you all for all of the work that you do. And I'd okay. also like to say, um, I, April 28, 2019, is National Blue Sunday Day of Prayer for our children all over the United States, I guess. Yes, <laughs> Okay, we'll move on to item number seven, GIS Environmental Coordinator Cat Lee. It is uh, discuss and approve the quotation for the 2019 renewal of the Nixel Solutions Service Agreement between Grimes County and Everbridge for reverse 911 service and authorize the county judge's signature. Ms. Lee has informed me that this item will be tabled. We're going to review another contract instead, and you'll bring it back at a future date. All right. Is that okay with everyone? All right. Thank I, you. I do have a question for you on that. Mm -hmm. I was looking at this. This is just a quote, but it it's a three-year quote. Um, so just based on looking at this, I don't see any way to get out if we need to. Is there an actual document that says it's a year-to-year -year thing in the event that we can't continue? It's a three-year continuation, which uh, the reason the, new, the, the company that we're going to meet with next week while we're at uh, the judge, myself, and Dave Lilly are at a conference, um, we'll have a year-to-year -year contract instead of a three-year contract. Um, and this other company also has several different, um, I want to say, um, different um, features. features that we can uh, access. And they also use our data, uh, our mapping data, instead of Google uh, happy data. Um, okay. So that's why we tabled this so that we can meet with this, uh, the other uh, company next week. All right. Thank you. Are there any other questions? All right. We'll move on to item number eight, building maintenance manager Al Peeler. Number eight, discuss and take action to approve the auction of a 2008 Ford Expedition on GovDeals.com. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. Al Peeler, Maintenance Manager. I, uh, the last vehicle sold, we sold for $1,237. That's $600 over a market value. I don't know how we did that. <laughs> so I come to get rid of the other vehicle that we're replacing with the one new one. It's a 2008 Ford Explorer. Transmission. It was Miss uh, Weeks. Then this it was. Is Explorer. This is an Explorer. Yeah. Um, it was Miss Weeks. Then it went to West Males. Um, adult probation. And. Uh, elections. Uh, huh? Elections. Elections. That's thank you. Uh, elections have been using it currently. 
At this time, I believe the transmission's going out of it, and every time somebody uses it, I know it has a head gasket, head gasket out of it because every time somebody uses it, I have to pull a plug and drain the water so somebody else can use it. So now that we have our vehicle, I believe it's time to let somebody else drain the water. <laughs> Is there any discussion on the matter? So it's an explorer? It's an explorer. Is there an issue on the agenda item? Okay. No, if you want, if you were really concerned about it, the question is a notice to the public. And if you thought somebody from the public was interested enough to be here for an explorer versus an expedition, um, there, there are times that we can put, if they're, uh, you put the wrong number, let's say you got a seven digit number and you miss one of those numbers, it doesn't mean you have to recalendar that or reschedule that for another meeting. It's, uh, it's acceptable to move on as it is, but if you were concerned enough that somebody uh, would have done something differently, maybe shown up, had the notice been different, then you can certainly table the item, but uh, it's sufficient to move forward. I move that we approve the auction of the 2008 Ford Explorer. Second. On GoDeals.com. All right. We have a motion on the floor. All of those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you. We are now up to number nine, advertisement of software purchase and movement of charges for the next budget year. Okay. So um, I'm trying to move. I had planned on, I have put some money in the budget for this budget cycle for maintenance software so we could go to a work ticket system. Um, I have did several companies. Uh, the lowest quote I could get, I talked to other maintenance managers, was $12,748 a year. And I thought, well, I guess we'll just keep with the email. Road and Bridge, other departments use iWorks. Um, I believe they sent iWorks to me. I believe Harry sent them to me. <clears throat> they come back at forty-seven fifty a year. After some no negotiations, I got them down to three thousand a year, which is a thousand less than I put in my budget for a software system. We had a date set that they were going to show us how it worked. Um, the, re the reason that I bring it to you is um, to advise you that I'm going to purchase this, but the money will be coming out of IT's because it's a software development out of his budget next year um, or the budget cycle for next year. That's why I brought Greg in. Um, he can tell you a, a little more about the software. I think it's going to provide faster service. We have, um, it's going to save us money on me knowing what I've changed and what I haven't. It's going to help me troubleshoot other things in the system. But I'd like you to talk, uh, hear Greg talk about the software because he can talk to you in more technical terms than I can. Before you go away, you're know. saying you have 3000 in your current budget? Yes, ma'am. Uh, which is $1,000 less than what you need? Yes, ma'am. But you're purchasing it this year or next year? I'm purchasing it this year. Then next year it will come out of the IT budget. Okay. So currently do you have money to move around to cover the 1000 Ma'am? Do you have money to move around to cover the thousand that you're short? No, I'm not short. Okay. I have I have I plan for four thousand. Oh, you plan? And it's, I got it for less. three thousand. Okay. Thank yes, you. it's a less than. <clears throat> All right. Thank you. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Greg Cannon. I'm the director of IT for Grimes County. As Al had mentioned, he had brought me in uh, several weeks back when he was beginning to look at some of his software because he wanted a, a viewpoint from IT uh, standpoint as, 
uh, how the software works. He wanted to make sure I was involved in all the demo presentations so I could ask any technical uh, questions. Uh, iWorks has been around a long time. Uh, the great thing about this product, as Harry can tell you as well, is once you purchase this product, the contract says that's the price you pay forever. The, the price never raises on, on, on the products. They, they've got customers that bought it 20 years ago, they're still paying the price they paid 20 years ago. Uh, so that's, that's a good advantage. It won't increase uh, each year. Uh, it's a highly reputable program. It's all cloud-based, so we don't have to worry about providing servers or installing the software. Uh, they provide all the technical training, all the setup. Uh, it's highly customizable, which is what Alan and I liked about it most, because we can tailor it exactly the way that he needs it to, to function for this county. It can be highly complex or it can be very simple. It uh, helps track costs, so at any point, the commissioner's gonna ask, how much did we spend on this building last year? He could pull up all the tickets, all the maintenance, everything that was done on that building can give you a total dollar, dollar cost instantly on what was, what was spent on that building. Uh, everything that I saw from the IT standpoint looks like a great product. Uh, all the questions that Al asked of the group, it seems like it'll do everything he needs and, and, and more. Uh, it seems like a very simple uh, program to use and like I said, it's web-based. It allows people from anywhere they're at, uh, any employee can enter a ticket into the system that says, you know, we've got a water break in this building, we've got, uh, you know, we're out of uh, hand towels in the courtroom, we're out of water, et cetera. All that can be put in, he can track. I can tell you from the standpoint of the help desk that IT's put in, it's been a tremendous help to us, and we're finding more and more people are using that, that ticketing system. So I, I think it'll be a huge benefit to the maintenance department on, on any number of levels. So I, from an IT standpoint, I fully support what maintenance is doing. Okay. I, don't, I don't believe, Greg, I could be wrong, I don't believe Greg has a problem with me purchasing this and then him picking it, it up. I'll just take some out of my 505 and put in 19 next year. It, it was just that it was in your budget this year and you're making us aware that next year yes. it will flow out of his budget yes, like all software. Yes, Okay. All right. Thank you both. All right, this is not an action item, so it was just an uh, update. Right now, we're up to Road and Bridge Engineer Harry Walker, item number 10, consider and take action to allow Road and Bridge to go out for bids for construction contracts for asphalt paving and chip sealing. Good morning, everyone. Uh, one of the items that was discussed in a recent workshop on the, uh, the road and bridge projects for the year was to investigate the possibility of contracting out some of our chip sealing projects. Uh, I did follow up on that, and after talking to um, some of our uh, neighboring counties, I uh, found out that it looks like some of the other counties are able to get uh, chip sealing work done by a contractor for a comparable price to what we're paying doing it in-house. Uh, so I thought we would go ahead, just as we've discussed in the past, the chip sealing operation uh, requires a lot of our manpower and resources be applied to those projects and leaves us uh, deficient in other areas of our maintenance program. Uh, so I thought, we, given that it looks like uh, the cost uh, would be comparable, that we would go ahead and try uh, Try to go ahead and, and contract some of this out this year and see how that works and use our crews to you know, work on other items. So uh, I want to go out for bids on that. And then at the same time, uh, we also talked about doing some hot mix asphalt paving uh, on a portion of County Road 302 and Link Road. And at the same time, I want to go out for bids on those projects as well. Okay, so thanks for, for authorization for two separate bids. Okay. I move to allow Road and Bridge to go out for bids for construction contracts for asphalt paving and chip sealing. Second. 
Uh, we have a motion to allow Rolling Bridge to go out for bids for construction contracts for asphalt paving and chip ceiling. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, thank you, Mr. Walker. Number 11 is also yours. Consider and approve the second renewal of the special road use agreement, which help me say that word Juno. Juno Oil and Gas. I'm going to ask that you take no action on this item. Um, Juno's project has been delayed somewhat, and they were concerned that if they renewed the permit at this time, it might expire again before they were ready to go to work. So okay. they'll come back later when they're a bit closer uh, to doing their well. Okay, thank you very much. Number 12, discuss and consider approval of establishing a weekend crew for road and bridge. This is another item that came out of the, uh, the recent workshop that we had. Mm -hmm. um, as you may recall, Judge Fouth, floated the idea of setting up a weekend crew uh, during the summer months when there, our crews work four 10-hour days. Um, and his, what his thinking was that we could take advantage of having uh, all this equipment that sits idle for three days of the week during the summer. And if we could bring in additional personnel, we could have people work that equipment Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. After some discussions with the auditor's office and the judge and myself, uh, we decided that hiring a weekend crew might be difficult, just finding people that were interested in working those kind of days, um, and particularly finding people that we were comfortable we could send out on their own, essentially unsupervised, uh, without creating any issues. So, what we came back to was that maybe a more workable solution uh, would be to authorize a significant amount of overtime uh, for the Road Bridge Department to allow us to have a Friday and Saturday 20 hours a week of overtime available uh, to do ditch work uh, for the same crew setup that we talked about, which would be a great all operator. Um, three drivers and at least one flagger. Um, so after discussing, uh, again, in-house with the auditor's office, the judge and myself, we decided to bring this proposal to you. Uh, if it's, if it were approved as presented, the, the idea is that we would do this during the period of time uh, of daylight savings time when we're, the regular crews are working four day weeks um, have the overtime available to do 20 hours additional a week for that crew um, or for the personnel required for that crew to function uh, which assuming we get this set up and started by the first weekend in May uh, we'd be looking at uh, paying for 440 hours of overtime for the crew um, which we work through the, the cost figures uh, that ends up with benefits uh, a little over $58,000 for this cycle to from now till uh, the end of daylight savings time the last well in this case these figures are based on the end of the budget year since daylight savings time would be in November so the 58000 would get us to the end of this year and then if things worked out, uh, we might include this in next year's budget. But the 58000 on the spreadsheet I gave you is through the end of the current budget year. September 30th, is that what? Pardon? September 30th? Well, the, the 28th is the, the last Saturday okay. of the budget year. So we cut it off there. All right. And I'm also asking if, if this were approved, that we would need to increase uh, certain line items in the drainage department uh, for fuel repair maintenance and tires where we're working their equipment. Uh, this much additional, we would need to anticipate additional expenses to go along with that. Uh, that estimate through that same period comes out to a total of $29,300. 
And if uh, y'all are amenable to doing this program, uh, we'll bring back a budget amendment uh, for all these costs at uh, the future board meeting. Now, it's 491 Road and Bridge, or is that drainage? 491 is the drainage crew. Okay. Uh, what our thinking is that the overtime would be available to both departments because we have people that are capable of operating the great oil and capable of driving trucks in both departments. And to make sure we, we always have the personnel available when we need them, I want to open it up to both. So in the budget amendment, you would see these costs split between the two departments for the overtime. Because we're looking at using the drainage crews, equipment, uh, the line item adjustments, and for fuel and such would be just in their uh, budget. <clears throat> well, if um, we go out for bids and, 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 and find out that the uh, contracting out some of this asphalt paving and chip ceiling would free up some people as well not to have to do the overtime and we still would be able to do some of that work. Well, and, and don't forget that part of what we've discussed, you know, would like to, for us to find ways to get more work done and yeah. more paving done. Yeah. Rather than contract it out and, and do less, we would like to do more with the folks we have too. We'd like to try to do both. Yeah. Uh, if you recall the, the road list that we looked at during the workshop, uh, would include new paving on about 17 miles of road. In the past, uh, the county's goal was 10 miles a year. So we're, we're trying to, to get more work done and find ways to be more efficient with it at the same time. So yeah, I would like to do both if possible. Okay. And our policy states that you have to have good drainage in order to pave that particular yes. road. And, and this proposal for the overtime is focused on the drainage work. Uh, we discussed that the, the highest priority uh, would be to get better drainage and that the, if we could do more paving at the same time, great. But the more fundamental thing is getting the drainage. So this is a bad drainage work primarily. Um, do the auditors have anything they'd like to contribute or tell us where <laughs> you think we can go with this? Um, well, I mean, this would be a budget amendment. This would be a would budget amendment, to. okay. Yeah, um, I don't know if you would want it to be brought back up before Commissioner's Court as a budget amendment mm -hmm. with the figures. Mm -hmm. uh, um, the wording in the agenda kind of was gearing towards the weekend crew, and so it's not real clear that it's regarding overtime. I don't know if you would just bring it back before Commissioner's Court as a budget amendment and clearly stating what it's for. Okay. We, we I think would we need to bring back a budget amendment in any case. Uh -huh. So if, if y'all are agreeable to the concept, then we'll move forward and bring the budget amendment back to you uh, in the next couple of weeks. Okay. I want to mention too that the drainage crew has been the single most important and probably the most efficient use of our, our tax money, I think, since we and put that in place. Case in point, County Road 446 was paid back in 2012, I believe. Or, no, 2011. Early 2012, we had about a two-inch rain on that road, and it washed away some of the pavement in the middle of the road. Since we have done, and that's where we started with the drainage crew on that road, since we have done the drainage work on that road, uh, to my knowledge, we haven't had any pavement washed off of that road in 46. So it, it's making a huge difference in, in not only the paved roads, but the roads that we have base on, because we're not losing the base that we have put out on these roads. And prior to this, we were losing a lot of base off these roads when we got a big rain because they were it was just being washed away that we didn't have the drainage there. Yeah, to follow up on what you said, Commissioner, I agree with you 100%. If we look at this from a sensible approach, sensible approach, the road infrastructure in Grimes County is one of the things that has the greatest impact day-to-day -day 
on the taxpayers. And we just keep spinning our wheels sometimes to, to keep the roads so that people can travel across the county. And Commissioner and I have had a discussion that if we can control some of the drainage issues in the county, that's probably going to alleviate some of the major problems. The issue is we, right now, we don't have the manpower. We're pretty spread thin in the road and bridge department to do all that needs to be done. So this is a lot of money and it's a big investment, but it's a big investment in, our, in one of our greatest assets in the county, and that's our infrastructure, our, our transportation from one side of the county to the others. And I understand it's not in the, it's not in the, the budget as of yet, uh, but from my seat, based on what I've seen, uh, I believe that it's a, a very needed expense. That's my two cents on that. I think uh, you've done a wonderful job of bringing this back to us. Uh, we were looking for um, solutions to some of the issues that keep occurring over and over again. And unless we get ahead on some of the drainage issues, we're going to continue to see maintenance costs uh, increase. And we're working very hard. You all are working very hard to try to uh, come up with solutions. And um, I think it's a great, um, I don't know the word I'm looking for, but we were trying to implement another drainage crew. And, and this basically gives us another drainage crew because those days haven't been worked for uh, drainage. So it puts, a, puts us ahead a little bit. Yeah. Well, again, we are trying to, to find solutions to the, to the problems we're dealing with. There, there is no lack of work for the crews. Uh, and this, uh, you know, the judge is correct that having all of our equipment sitting idle over the weekends uh, when you've got a three-day weekend uh, is not, you know, this is, this is a way to increase the efficiency of the usage of that equipment. Uh, we've already paid for the equipment. Uh, if we spend some additional money on salaries for the operators, uh, we can increase you know, theoretically 50% uh, more production out of the drainage crew during <coughs> the summer months, 25% you know, overall, but still a, a major increase in our efficiency and productivity. Um, and, and along with some of the other things we've talked about this morning, I think we can maybe start to get ahead of the, of the issues a little bit. Um, what, how do you, how do you, how does your crew feel about this? Are they seem like they? It sounds like a great idea to them to have I an have, opportunity I to do all the time. To my superintendent and the foreman, and they're supportive. Uh, we did not want to broadcast it to the crew just Absolutely. yet, okay. um, because we didn't get people excited about something and then have it maybe not come to be. Uh, in in general, the guys. Um, are appreciative of the opportunities they get to get overtime. Um, there are particularly a number of them that will work overtime anytime they have the opportunity. Um, and again, with this approach where essentially everybody in the crew has an opportunity when they want. It won't be a mandatory, we're not going to say, okay, you five guys, you're working overtime every weekend. We can make it uh, more of a voluntary approach where if people, you know, they want to go on vacation, uh, they need to make a few extra bucks to pay for the vacation or whatever, they can volunteer to work some overtime for a while. Or if they have, you know, other things they have planned for the weekend, you know, they're not required to do that. So I think it'll be well received. Uh, we'll sit down with them, uh, you know, if, if this is approved and go through it all and get everything lined out. But the, the management group uh, is, the, is very supportive of it. And everybody feels like this is a more workable solution than establishing the weekend crew. You know, just, we foresaw too many issues, uh, particularly in hiring 
all the people we needed and you know, what do you do if you hire you know the, the new truck drivers for example and you can't find a great all operator and, you know, what do you do with those guys so uh, that that op option that idea was problematic I think this is much more workable and I think it will be well received and, and you know there are people on the cruise that aren't going to want to take any overtime and that's fine and then you would have had to train, train them. Uh, yeah, we don't have to train everybody. We don't have to uh, teach them the way around the county or how we do things. So there's a lot of a lot of efficiency in that approach. So, just a couple more questions. The the work that's going to be done by this crew, we hope will offset the expense of the crew by maintaining or improving the problematic areas enough that you don't have to keep going back and putting material and redoing what gets torn up well, the, through drainage issues. The, the drainage, yes. Um, the, you know, we'll get additional work done. The, the drainage work we're doing, um, as Commissioner Dobianski said, helps protect these roads from damage and if you can you know, avoid that damage then there's less maintenance to be done in the future. Uh, we think this will will benefit. There, there's no lack of work to be done. There's plenty to be done. Uh, that's not going to be an issue. But we uh -huh. think that, again, it lets us start to get ahead of that maintenance curve where we're not just always in a reactionary mode when we start to prevent some of the damages uh, and instead of spending our time and efforts on repairing things we can do uh, more beneficial maintenance so I would I would guess that it at some point if the court approves going forward with this that you'll give us an assessment on what your opinion is regarding the efficiency the effectiveness of this particular I yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to try it for you know, a few weeks and then report back and let you know how things seem to be going and then uh, and keep it like anything else we do. Uh, if we're trying something new, we need to evaluate, you know, how that works out. You know, like they say, the best laid plans sometimes go awry. But I'll be glad to report back to you from time to time as how this seems to be working. Any other questions? Uh, I don't have any, any additional questions. If there are no further questions, I move that we approve the the uh, weekend crew for Road and Bridge. Second. All right. We have a motion uh, by Commissioner Dobinski, seconded by Commissioner Cox, to approve uh, establishing a weekend crew for Road and Bridge. And just to be clear, that I heard a couple of times, I just want to be clear that it's coming back for a budget amendment. And, yes. Yeah. And also, when it comes back for a budget amendment, I'd make this point: if you're going to do uh, a review of it over after a couple of months, I mean, you may have uh, little participation, you may have difficulty getting sufficient numbers for a full crew on a regular basis. It may be that he doesn't need all of the money mm -hmm. to fund the entire operation through the full budget year. So I would just say keep that in mind, but in my mind this needs to come back for a budget amendment. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, all of those in favor, can oh, we one say question. Okay, yes ma'am. Um, does that include the other the second page? Yes. For for the budget when she comes back with the budget yes. amendment, are you asking the auditor's office to come back with both of those pages as the budget as the proposed budget amendment? Yes. You're, you're approving the structure today, yes. I understand. You're not approving not the dollar. Right. right. It's approval of the concept. Yeah. All right. All of those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> Thank you. We are now up to Road and Bridge Report. Uh, but, Mr. Walker, do you mind if I just acknowledge um, Miss Martinez? Uh, you were not here earlier, and we did approve the proclamation that you all sent over as April as Sexual Assault Awareness Month in Grimes County. Yes. And, uh, and Commissioner, I just say on mm -hmm. the agenda item, if you wanted to go back to it, if they had something to say besides just the proclamation, okay. they certainly could do that. All right. Yeah, I 
Would you like to yes. come and introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Consuelo Martinez. And I would just like to say, we would like to continue collaborating with Grimes County to help serve those who have been victims of sexual assault. As of uh, 2018, we did help serve 19 community members of Grimes County. Mm -hmm. And we'd just like just to continue to work with you guys, if you allow me. But well, we hope you won't have as many cases to work, <laughs> but we, we appreciate all of the work that you all do. And I did want to acknowledge your presence that you came in, and uh, we we thank you for everything you do. Thank you. So yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Now if we could go to Road and Bridge report. We have been advantage of better turning weather here lately. Uh, we put a lot of rock out the last few weeks on a lot of different roads. Uh, we also, the, the drainage crew has been very busy and the side ditcher uh, is back in operation at full speed. Uh, so the drier conditions have helped a lot. Uh, we did get some coverts replaced on 195, 203, Bracewell, and Harrison. Um, part of that work had been delayed. Um, you know, we started on, up on Bracewell and Harrison a while back and had to postpone that work. So people have been uh, curious as to why we had coverts sitting out there and not being installed. We had some other things that came up that caused us uh, to have to delay that, but that's been done now. Uh, the one cover is a 60 inch, but these aren't just little minor covers. Uh, we do have our traffic counters out. We're continuing to collect data uh, to support the selection of roads for paving. Uh, we're continuing with that. We did have the tree cutters in to do a little bit of work here last week. Uh, and then elsewhere, you know, we're continuing to work with Magellan Pipeline on uh, dealing with issues associated with pipeline construction. We also had another meeting uh, with Plains Pipeline uh, to discuss the proposed link to Webster Pipeline, uh, which is coming up probably in January of next year. Commissioner Cox and the judge and I had an opportunity to meet with them on last week after court. Uh, this is, they're telling us now that this is gonna be a 36 inch crude oil pipeline uh, that will follow the alignment of the Enterprise Pipeline uh, that is near completion in the north end of the county. Uh, and they're expecting, they, they're starting to do land work and things. And we had some people call and ask, them, what do you know about this? pipeline with the funny name. Uh, so they're, that's coming up. They're telling us construction uh, probably will start in January of next year. Uh, so this can be a, a major uh, project for the county also. <coughs> Questions? Can you touch just a little bit about the uh, base stabilization test? That you certainly. Uh, I believe I mentioned previously a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we set up uh, a demonstration project uh, on County Road 446 to look at, at two different uh, base stabilization techniques. Uh, one of them is using a proprietary product called Base Seal, uh, which is an additive that you put into the base material uh, that tightens the road up and, and hardens it. Uh, that worked very well. We had some logistical issues at the project, but the, the actual results came out very well. Uh, it makes for a very hard, firm uh, base uh, that most people are going to look at it and say it looks like concrete. It's you know, it's, a, it's a gray color. It has that appearance. I'm a little disappointed because because of these logistical issues, we ended up finishing the road in the dark with equipment without working lights. Uh, so the finish on the road wasn't as good as I'd hoped. Uh, but the, the, it's very solid. 
it, I mean, by the next morning, it was hard. Uh, it's, I was impressed. I've, I've seen demonstrations on a lot of proprietary products over the years, and generally they end up being disappointing. This was uh, was not disappointing. It's cost-wise, it's less expensive than what we do for chip sealing. Um, certainly, it's more expensive than just putting rock on the roads. Uh, so it's an intermediate cost treatment uh, that I think will give us very good longevity and durability of these roads. Uh, it is my intention to try and use this product on a couple of more projects this summer, uh, not on a demonstration basis, but uh, we'll have to actually pay for it this time. But, the product is not that expensive, so I think it's got some potential. At the same time, we did another section of the road, a quarter mile of the base seal. We did a quarter mile uh, adjacent to it, uh, stabilizing with an asphalt emulsion, which is a, a more you know, common technique. Uh, that also worked out very well. Uh, the, it produces a Essentially, it looks like a black road. It, it doesn't quite look like asphalt, but it, it's a dark color. You can tell it's been, been treated with asphalt. Um, this is the, the asphalt emulsion gives a more flexible base that uh, you could blade and grade and do things like that on. Uh, the base seal is hard. You don't have to blade it. Uh, it's not not receptive to being bladed, just like you would put a blade on a concrete road. Uh, they both they both work out very well. Uh, running the cost numbers for the, the work we did and everything. Uh, the asphalt emulsion uh, looks like it's probably going to be too expensive to use on a regular basis. Uh, there may be uh, we're on a widespread basis. There may be specific locations. That it might be a good solution. But, uh, both of the products worked out uh, well. They did what they were supposed to do. Uh, the commissioner spent quite a bit of time out looking at it. Uh, John City came out to, to look at what we we're doing. Uh, I think he made the, the, the vendors nervous having our county attorney. On the side. <laughs> <laughs> he, he That's why I was there. <laughs> he didn't file any suits or, or hit anybody with restraining orders. So I think we're okay. That's good. Are there any areas that actually have this uh, product in use right now that's how, how well it's aged or where we can kind of see? There, it has been used extensively the proprietary in Florida. Oh, it's in Florida. Uh, <laughs> it's we don't need a road trip, I guess. <laughs> well, we look at it. <laughs> Check the travel budget. Have you gotten calls from citizens? We got a, a number of of comments from citizens when we were out there working and since then uh, that they really like it. Uh, there were, there were you know, several people that were back and forth multiple times while we were working that uh, seemed to really think, think well of it. Uh, this is it's actually the sales representative for this project actually lives here in Grimes County. Uh, he's He's more than a sales representative. He's part owner of the company, uh, bought into the company recently. Uh, so it, the, the product has not been used on a widespread basis in Texas yet. Um, we actually we were trying to make arrangements to get a county engineer from Florida, one of the counties that's used a lot, to come over um, and consult with us on it. We weren't able to work that out. But, but you're getting, you're getting good news from, from them as far yes. as it's... it's they they have been using it. this product for 30 years, and they're very, very uh, complimentary. They're using it for that long, it must be pretty good. Yeah. They, they initially started out just using the base seal product as liquid, uh, and then over the years they, they changed their approach a little bit, and they uh, used base seal product and a lime additive, in recent years and found that works even better. But they said you can use it just by itself and it works very well even that way. So 
They're very complimentary of it. It probably depends basically on your base, what you need yeah. to add some line it, to it. You know, and, and now, Base Seal's intention is that you're going to use this as a base course and then put some surface on it. What I want to do is, is leave it open for you know, at least a year or two and see if it is a viable alternative for us to use just as is without having to, to pay over it. We'll see how that works. But there, they did say, uh, we're not sure you know, how well they have it going to work actually as it works. In that fashion for a year or so. Um, they said that's not really the intention. But we'll see how, how that goes. If you drive down 446 between 47 and 48, you can't miss it. So there was the potential to go ahead and add that into the into the product when we actually do the chip seal. Yeah, potentially yes, that, as well. Yeah, that would be an approach. Um, if you use this and then chip seal over it, I think you'd have a very durable, very long lasting room. Um, and that's that's what we're looking for. At a price we can afford. Yeah. <laughs> I could have sworn that he said they used that in down around Beaumont, maybe. There, in there Texas are there are some places in Texas they have used it before, but the bulk of their installations are over Florida. I and, don't and all of the installations have been with the with the surface as well to cover it. Not all of them. They they have had other clients um, that left it uncovered um, for one reason or another. It's maybe you know we're going to prepare it this year and we'll come back and pay for it next year and then that gets delayed or whatever. It's not wasn't necessarily a planned approach, um, but they have said yeah it, it works pretty well that way too. Do you, do you have to have the turgeon machine or some machine like that to apply? We have equipment that can do that, uh, not nearly as efficiency. Part of part of the demonstration project, um, they also arranged to bring out a, a Wurgen. I think it's a Wurgen. Wurgen um, is the name of the company. They brought out a reclaimer um, and allowed us to use it for the day actually train one of our operators to use it and everything um, at just the cost of hauling it out here. So, um, and that's that's an impressive piece of equipment. It's designed to go through and, and grind up whatever materials you have on the road um, and bring it into a, a consistent mixture. Um, you know, so you particularly well suited for like old asphalt roads where you've got years and years of pothole patching and overlays and things that happen, you get sort of a, a very uh, non-uniform material. You grind it up and turn it essentially back into base material that is uniform and gives you a much better starting point for your construction. So that was part of the, the demonstration too. But it, it's a fancy machine. Pretty neat. Yeah, I mean, I can John comment on probably even operate it. But well, <laughs> Mr. Machine. Cox got in. It's creating liability that I saw. Yes, <laughs> that is correct. The machine that they brought out uh, uh, was the smaller version, and the price tag on it, I'm sure it would be negotiable, but was about $450,000. And I asked the guy, could I drive it? And he just kind of giggled a little bit. He didn't answer me back, but uh, it, it was a pretty impressive piece of equipment. But the answer to that question is we've got the equipment to do it. We don't need the work in. We, we can do it. We have a piece of equipment that performs the same function. It's much simpler, not as sophisticated. It doesn't have the injection system, so you put the product right into the mixing box. Um, what we're looking at for some of these upcoming projects is renting a piece of equipment like that for a week or a couple of weeks. Um, we get up a little hard to get over the $450,000. If money were no object, I'd love to have one, but I think running one once in a while might be a better approach. Well, thank you, um, Mr. Walker, for your report. We'll move on to item number 13, consider and take action regarding the burn ban and authorized county judge's signatory. Um, we don't have Mr. Liddy here this morning. <coughs> 
anybody we have any? We have rain in forecast. <laughs> Again. <laughs> okay, I don't I don't think we need to take action. Uh, is that what I'm hearing? No action. Yes. All right. Thank you. We're on to item number 14. Receive any updates on the strategic plan? Any updates? Yes, sir. Maybe should have been brought up in the public announcements, but I think it fits in the strategic plan also. Um, the judge found provided me with a press release okay. related to the 249 project. Thank you. Um, I won't read the whole thing because it's an entire page, but TxDOT has agreed to make changes that we were requesting to the 249 project. Uh, that will include adding overpasses at 1774, at 304, and 1748, which were not included in the original project. And they're also going to add passing lanes uh, periodically along the alignment, uh, similar to what we have on Highway 30, where it's what they refer to as a, a Super 2 configuration. Basically a two-lane road, we have a passing lane every few miles. Mm -hmm. Like 105. Similar to what they've done recently on 105. So, I'll, again, this, the, the press release came from Representative Lamont's office. I'm going to read a portion of it. Um, he says, I thank TxDOT, Judge Fowle, and all the county commissioners of Grimes County for their hard work and collaboration with me. On this effort to ensure overpasses and passing lanes are implemented into the design of SH 249 within Grimes County. If it was not for the collaborative effort of all elected officials and citizens, these needed revisions to address the safety concerns, the safety concerns would not have occurred. Uh, these improvements combined with the removal of the toll ensures that this project is safe for our citizens and provides a benefit to the region by addressing our future overall transportation needs. And then Judge Fouth added um, a special thanks both to Representative LeMond and textile engineer Lance Simmons for their steadfast work to ensure the revisions to State Highway 49 were made possible. Um, without the collective effort of everyone involved, including the entire community, these major updates never would have happened. Happy that the improvements are being put in place to address the safety concerns that are being are being implemented, and the Crimes County will benefit from the placement of the overpasses and passing lanes as we continue to grow. I would also add to that list uh, a special thanks to Chad Boney with mm -hmm. the TxDOT. Uh, he has worked particularly hard in pushing uh, the idea of these changes to the project within TxDOT. Awesome. And I think his support was crucial uh, in achieving this result. And quite frankly, uh, I believe that these changes will save lives in this project. Uh, there were some legitimate safety concerns uh, that these, these changes will go a long, long ways to address. So I'm very excited uh, to hear this announcement. So am I. <laughs> I, I want to say it a, a little bit louder for our world out there to hear. We now have overpasses being approved for County Road 306, 307, State Highway 105, uh, FM 1774, County Road 304, and FM 1748. And the addition of passing lanes for both eastbound and westbound travel lanes. This will be in this week's newspaper, is that correct? It's in, today's it's in today's paper. For anyone that wants to read it in its entirety, and I want to thank all of those that worked so tirelessly to get that done. Uh, it does make it a safer project, which is the reason why we voted for it, is for the safety of the citizens and everyone involved. So we want to thank everybody, a special thanks to you too, Mr. Dobinski, for working so hard also. I want to comment. Uh, a meeting that we had in Navasota back in sometimes the fall of last year with Williams Brothers, who is constructing the project, TxDOT said that they were expanding 1774 to three lanes up to 249, and we're going to put a light there. And the whole purpose of this meeting was safety. 
in my comment to them at the end of the meeting, I said, and they stressed that this would be used as a hurricane evacuation route. And I asked them at the end of that meeting, I said, what do you all think is going to happen when you have 1774 coming into 249 with the red light there as a hurricane evacuation event? It's going to be chaos, just like it was back in when we had Hurricane Harvey and some of the other hurricanes in, in Grimes County and, and Washington County, when we had traffic backed up, we had people stranded on the roads because they couldn't get through. And I think that kind of got their attention, and they start really. That's when I think it really started dawning on them that they needed an overpass at that intersection, and it kind of snowballed to, to get this moving to the to the point that we're on today. And again, I, we thank all the people who came out, the citizens from Plantersville, the uh, elected officials in Plantersville, were very vocal in this. Uh, and, and all the citizens were able to uh, get this move and get it get it done. Once again, a big thank you to Texas Department of Transportation. We are now up to if we don't have any. I have. I have you have any more? Yeah, I have. Okay. Grimes County Animal Rescue met with Shelter Planters of America. The board did Saturday, April the sixth, to uh, go over the needs assessment that they provided for us on the facility that we're looking at at the uh, over at the law enforcement center within six to eight weeks we will have a conceptual design and at that time we will be coming back to commissioner's court uh, with a report on that so we're moving forward with that project all right thank you commissioner commissioner cox yes yeah, so the the discussion we had earlier about the road situation that does fall into a couple of the strategic plan items and uh, we are moving forward as another example with the strategic plan some of the items listed on there well thank you all for the updates and at this time we'll move on to item number 15. move to adjourn second all right we have a motion to move to adjourn by yeah. commissioner mallard and second by Commissioner Dobinski, all of those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. All right, thank you.